Hello there. In this tutorial, we are going to create this basic pathfinding project, where we can move around a Roomba in a room, and well, the Roomba always finds the shortest path between the two points. It's ultimately a fairly simple project that is quite useful for basically any kind of game. Now, pathfinding does involve quite a bit of math, and it can get fairly complicated. However, you don't actually have to do it yourself, because Python has a module dedicated entirely to pathfinding. So we are going to use that, and essentially we are going to create two projects. The first one will introduce the pathfinding module itself, and this one will be fairly short because it's a pretty simple module. And for the second part, we will use the pathfinding module to create an actual useful project. Now before we get into the code, I think it is going to be useful to cover some basic pathfinding theory. And don't worry, it's going to be short. Whenever we talk about pathfinding, we basically talk about two things. Number one, we have a grid of points, and some of these points can be walked over and some cannot. For example, a grid could look like this, where a one is a movable field and a zero is a wall. And inside of this grid, we also define a start and a target cell. And between those two points, we are trying to find the shortest path. Now, finding that shortest path is the second part. And this is also the actually difficult part because finding this shortest path requires quite a bit of math. As a matter of fact, there are quite a few different mathematical approaches to figure this path out. The most famous mathematical model to achieve this is called A star, but there are quite a few more. And if you want to get into the math, it can really get quite complex. But with that, we can get started with the pathfinding module. And first of all, we have to install it. And this is going to happen in the usual way. So either in the terminal or on the PowerShell, type pip install pathfinding and you should be good to go. And with that, we can create a really simple pathfinding project. And just for reference, I have taken this project from the official tutorial of the module. I'll put a link to it in the description. And here I have a completely empty sheet of code. And first of all, I have to import a couple of things. So let's start by import path finding. And if I run the code now, I can see finished and we are not getting an error message. So I know that this module here is installed and everything is good. If you get an error message here, something did go wrong. So do check that. However, for this module, we don't actually want to import everything. So let's change this a tiny bit. For now, from pathfinding, I want to import a very specific thing. And what I want to import is pathfinding.core.grid. And from this, I want to import the class called grid. And do make sure here that the first letter has to be capitalized. That is quite important. And this class is going to be, well, creating our grid. So let's use this right away. And for this grid, we actually need some kind of map. And in my case, I have created one already that I called a matrix. It looks like this. Now, every time we have a one in this field, we can move over the cell, but we cannot move over a zero. And later on, we are going to have a much more complex map. For now, this is just for illustration. And now that we have that, we have to actually create a grid. And let me actually create a comment here to illustrate this. So create a grid. And this grid is going to be stored in a variable that I'm going to call grid. And for this, we are going to use the grid class. So the one we have literally just imported, this one here. And this grid is going to need one named argument. And this is called the matrix parameter. And in our case, we already have a matrix. I just called it matrix. So literally all we're doing is we're importing this one here as a named argument for the parameter that is also called matrix. Now that we have that, we have to define a start and an end cell. So number two, create a start and end cell. And this also is going to be stored in a variable. So I want a start cell and I want an end cell. And in here, we have to make a choice because essentially we have to pick one of these cells and well, define a start point. And we can literally pick any cell that we can walk on. So we couldn't pick this one here, but we could pick literally any other cell. And how you create this 
is we first have to get our grid again. So the one we have just created. And on this, we have to create a node. And in this node, we have to define an X and a Y cell. And in my case, let's just go with zero and zero. So right now, this zero and zero here would be the top left cell in our grid. And then for the end cell, let's do the same thing, except now I want to get a different cell. Let's say in my case, I want five and two. And I guess just to be clear here, this five is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So we are on this column here. And then this two is going to be zero, one, and two. So we're essentially targeting the bottom right cell. And that is literally all we need for now. Now that we have that, we can go to the next step. That's going to be number three. And this is going to be to create a finder with a movement style. Now a finder basically is the mathematical model that gets us from here all the way to here. And this is another thing we have to import. So all the way at the top from pathfinding.finder. In my case, a star, I want to import the a star finder. And for this class here, be really careful with the naming and the capital letters. It can be quite finicky. But this finder is going to use the specific mathematical model that is called A star. So this is one kind of math to get us from point A to point B. And there are quite a few more. If you check the documentation, you can find all the relevant ones. And now that we have that, we can create what is called a finder. And this one also has to be stored in a variable. And this is then going to be an instance of the class. And that is all we needed. We are almost there. Next up, let's call this number four. We have to use the finder to find the path. All we have to do is getting our finder and then calling the method find underscore path. And in here, we have to pass in three different arguments. The start cell, the end cell, and the grid. So that is all information we already have defined earlier on. It really isn't all that bad once you get the hang of it. So I hope that makes sense. And now this method here is going to return two things. And let's store both in the variable. First of all, it's going to return the path. And second up, it's going to return what is called the runs. And runs basically means how many cycles or how many cells we have to go through to get to the end of the path. Can be sometimes useful, but in most cases you don't really need it. And well, with that, we have our path. So what we can do now is to print the result. So let's print our path. And if we run the code now, we can see a couple of tuples. And let's actually go through and see what happens here in our grid. We start in cell zero and zero, that is this point here. Then we go one further to the right, so we get to this point here. That is this one covered. Then we go to two and zero, so that's this one. Then we go to three and zero, that's this one. Then we go to four and zero, this one. Then five and zero, that's this one. And then we go downwards, so five and one, and then five and two. And that's the last two cells. And that is, well, the shortest path we could possibly take. Or I guess at least one of the shortest paths. There are a couple possible shortest ones in here. So let me minimize this again. And I guess just for completion, what we could also print is runs and this would get us 17. So this finder ran through this matrix 17 times to find this path here. It's, well, not the most relevant information. It really doesn't concern us too much. Although it does tell you one relevant thing. And that is that pathfinding is really hardware intensive. So what you want to be aware of is that you should be using pathfinding as little as possible. Because if you use it too much, it is going to tank the performance of your game quite substantially. 
So keep that in mind. I will talk about it more in the actual project. With that, we have some very basic pathfinding. Now there's one more thing that we could be adding because right now we don't have diagonal movement. So all we can do in this A star finder is move right, left, up, and down, which in a game sometimes isn't particularly realistic because you might also be able to move to the top right or bottom left and so on. So how could we add these different directions? And well, adding this is kind of cumbersome, although not too difficult. It is mostly a writing thing. Essentially, in this A star finder class, we have to add one argument, and that is called diagonal underscore movement. Now the problem is, the argument we have to pass into here has to be another class that we also have to import from the pathfinding module. It is called from pathfinding.core.diagonal movement. From this, we want to import diagonal movement. And now what we want to do, we can pass in this class in here. So diagonal movement and then dot all ways. So we always want to allow diagonal movement. And well, that is now all we needed. Although this part here, I do find a little bit cumbersome, but it's not too bad, I suppose. But now if I run all of this again, we are getting a slightly different path. So we start with zero and zero, one and zero, two and zero, three and zero. But now we go to four and one and five and two. So this is essentially our path. And I guess this one is slightly faster than the one we had before. And well, now we have diagonal movement. Wasn't actually all that bad. So that's a pretty good sign. And well, with that, we have our basic project. So now all you have to do is to implement all of this in some kind of project wherever you want to have it. In my case, it's going to be Pygame, but it could literally be anything else. So I guess with that, let's start talking about the actual project that is going to look much more interesting. Now for this project, I try to make it as simple as possible so we can focus on the pathfinding part. And this is most notable in how the level is set up or the room you can see right now. Essentially, this entire room is just one picture. And this picture is composed out of individual tiles, with each tile being 32 by 32 pixels wide and high. And then for the grid, I essentially played around and placed a zero wherever we have a tile with a wall and a one wherever we have a tile with a floor. But by themselves, the grid and the background art are completely separate. They just happen to look the same. Now this makes the project quite inflexible. Although in a real project, you could set this up significantly better. If you want to understand how to set something like this up, check out my tile set video. It explains all of this in much more detail. But in this case, I try to keep this project as simple as possible. But all the other parts are perfectly functional pathfinding. So you could use them in essentially any kind of game. Now, one more thing before we get into the actual code, and that is our folder setup. Right now, I have one folder with the code and all of the artwork, which essentially means I have one Python file, then the background image, then a Roomba image, and then one more image for the selection box thing. I'm not really sure how to call it. But with that, we have all we need. So let's jump straight into our actual project. And it is going to look like this. I already have a very basic setup. So essentially what I have in here is a basic import of Pygame, then the basic Pygame setup, then our game loop. And I'm simply drawing and updating all the stuff that we have. If you have no idea what any of this means, check out my introduction to Pygame. It is going to go over all of this in a great amount of detail. And well, besides that, I have also already imported all the stuff we need for the pathfinding. So this is the stuff you have just seen a couple of minutes ago. So, all right, with that, we can add a couple of things towards this. And let me add another section here. Let's call it the game setup. And then here we need two things. First of all, we need the background. And I call this BG underscore surface. And literally all we need for this one is pygame.image dot load and I call this one map dot png and as always don't forget to convert this thing so our game runs a little bit better 
And now all we have to do in our game loop, I want to get my screen and blit this background image. So bg underscore surf and the top left should be in position zero and zero. So if I run all of this, we can see our basic background image. And this is literally just an image, nothing fancy whatsoever. So, all right, let's close this. And with that, we can start creating our grid for the pathfinding. And for this grid, again, we are going to need a matrix. This one is going to look quite a bit larger. In fact, it looks like this. And well, this thing is a little bit larger, but if you look at this a tiny bit more closely, for example, here you can see the wall for the bathroom on the left side, and here you can see the wall on the right side of the bathroom. Or if you look on top, here you can see the kitchen table area that we can't move through. Here you can see one wall of the kitchen. And I guess if you actually draw it out, it does become a bit easier to see. So here we have a pillar, here we have another pillar, and here we have another wall. So this is essentially how the entire project is going to work. I have a background art, and on top of the background art, I have an actual pathfinding grid. And those two happen to have the same coordinates, but that's the only connection they have. I could totally change any of these points to get a different kind of pathfinding setup. So I hope that makes sense. But also this thing is getting quite wieldy, so let me minimize it and then we don't have to worry about it. And now with that, we can actually start creating our basic pathfinding. And I'm going to organize this in two classes. And let's start with the first one that I have called pathfinder. There's no inheritance, but we are going to need an init method. And for the init method, we need dunder init. As always, we need self. And for this one, I want to have a matrix. And then inside of this, let me add a comment for the basic setup. And in here, first of all, I want to have my self.matrix and just store the matrix by itself. And that in a second, is going to be just this matrix here that we are going to pass in there. It is not going to be a grid yet. So we are not creating the grid class. And you're going to see in a second why this information is useful by itself. It's essentially there to place the mouse cursor, but don't worry too much about it for now. Now, besides that, I do also want to create the actual grid. So self.grid is going to be the grid class. And in here, matrix is going to be the matrix. Now on top of that, I also want to import another image for this class. And let's call this one select surface. And for this one, all I want is pygame.image.load. And this one is called selection.png. And for this one, we need convert alpha because it has some alpha values. And this is literally just the selection image we need to display where the mouse cursor is. And let's actually start by creating an instance of this class right in our game setup. So in here, I'm going to create a pathfinder. And this is just pathfinder. And the one argument we are going to pass in here is the matrix. So this matrix up here that we just pass in there and nothing else. So when we are going to run this code, um, everything runs, but we can't see anything from the pathfinder yet because we are not using this class in any meaningful way. But this is going to change now because I'm going to give this class an update method that needs self and nothing else. And the first thing I want to do in here is to display where the mouse is. So the player actually knows what cell is going to be selected. And this, let's call it self.drawActiveCell. So we have to create this method now. So draw active cell. We need self as usual, but nothing else. And now in here, we have a problem that right now we have a mouse position. So we can tell the X and the Y coordinates of our mouse. But this is not the information that we are going to need. Because the information we do want is the index 
for the row and for the column in which of these cells our mouse is going to be. So for example, if we are in the cell all the way up here, I want to have the coordinates zero and zero. Or if we are in the one right next to it, this one should be zero and one. So row zero and column one. And this information we would have to get from a mouse position that could, for example, be 10 and 35. And I guess a better way to illustrate this, let me actually do this straight in the game. That might make more sense. So for now, I have my mouse position and I get my mouse position with pygame.mouse.get underscore position. And let's just print our mouse position. And don't forget to actually call this update method in our game loop. So pathfinder dot draw active cell for now. And if I run this, so now in the game, you can see my mouse. And if I move around, you can see the position of the mouse cursor in our game. And if I move all the way to the top left, you can see at some point zero and zero if I hit exactly the right pixel. There we go. Now this position is useful, but I do have to convert it because this top cell right now is going to be zero and zero. But my mouse position is going to be something like 16 and 19, for example. You can see it in the bottom left. And this number I would have to convert to zero and zero because this is going to be one cell. And then if a mouse is one field to the right, it's going to be right now 50 and 14. This would need to be one and zero. So we are in column one and row zero. And this has to be applicable to the entire field. So we convert our mouse position to a position inside of a coordinate system, specifically one field inside of this coordinate system. And this fortunately isn't all that difficult. So really all we have to do is we need to get a row and a column. And this could be a really interesting exercise. So try to figure this problem out yourself that you want to convert your mouse position with X and Y, that could be any number, into a coordinate system with a tile size of 32 and 32. So that for example, 16 and 16 for X and Y becomes zero and zero for the row and the column. But something like 50 and 10 is going to be one and zero for the row and the column. And this really is the sort of thing that is really easy to overthink, but solution is actually surprisingly easy. So essentially this mouse position here is going to return an X and a Y. So for now, I just want to get the row, which is going to be one or our Y position. And what I want to do is to get the floor division and divide it by 32, with 32 being our tile size. And let's actually do an example. Let's say for our mouse position, we have the position 50. And then we're going to apply the floor division and divide this by 32. Now, if we were to just divide this by 32, we would get something like 1.56. But since we are doing a floor division, all our result is going to be is a one. So all of this information is going to disappear and we are left with a one. And then this one is actually all we are going to need. So this is going to be our row then. And if we use a different number, let's say if we used 16 and applied and did a floor division by 32 again, this will get us to 0 0.5. But again, since we're doing a floor division, anything after the period is going to disappear. So this 0 0.5 is going to disappear and we are left with a zero. So we know that at the position 16, we are going to be on the row of zero. So this is going to give us exactly the right coordinate point that we are going to need. But now we can just copy all of this and apply the same thing to the column, except now we need the X and not the Y position. And with that, we have our row and our column. So now we can use that information to create a rectangle with an X and a Y position. This is going to be pygame dot rect and in here we are going to need one tuple with the left and the top and then another tuple with the width and the height 
and the width and the height are both going to be very simple because they're both 32. Now, the left and the top are slightly more complex. Well, not that much, to be honest. So for the left, I want to get my column and multiply this by 32. And then for my top, I want to get my row and multiply this by 32. And that way, we are turning our coordinate system into a specific position on our map. Except this one is now going to be always in a specific position, so it looks like we're following a grid. And now, what we can do, we can get our screen surface and split, and we have our self.select surface, and we have our rectangle. And now let's try to run all of this. And now we have our selection thing. So this green rectangle here is whatever cell we have selected. And this right now is following the grid really nicely. But there's one downside right now, that this green cell is even displayed over a wall or one of these tiles that we are not supposed to move over. And this I want to change. I only want to run this code here if this information is on top of a cell that we can move over. And I guess this could also be a pretty good exercise. So try to figure out how to change all of this here to only display this code if we are in our matrix over a one. The first thing we are going to need is the information in the matrix what cell we are on. So if we are on a one or on a zero. And for that, I'm going to create another variable that I call current cell value. And this information we can get from the matrix we already have in our class. And well, literally all we need is self.matrix. And in here, we first need the index of the row. And inside of that, we need the index of the column. So if I open the matrix again, the row here is literally going to select by indexing which of these rows or well lists we are going to look at. And then the column is going to look inside of each of those and see which number we're going to pick inside of this list. So quite simple actually. And well, now all we have to do is if our current cell value is equal to one, then we want to run those two lines. And if it is not the case, well, we don't want to do anything. And now if I run all of this, I still can see my green rectangle, but now if I go over a wall, it disappears. And if I go again on the floor, now it reappears. So this way, we have a selection box thing so the player can tell where we are supposed to move. So this part wasn't actually so bad. Cool, so now I can minimize this method here and not worry about it again. And now with that, we can actually start talking about the pathfinding itself. And this is going to involve a couple more steps. But in the most basic sense, here's what we are going to do. In our pathfinder class, we are going to add some functionality with the pathfinding module to find a start position and an end position. And then we're going to have one attribute where we're going to store that information. Now on top of that, we are going to create a whole other class called Roomba. And this Roomba essentially is going to look at the Pathfinder class and see if there's any path information. And as soon as there's a path information, it is going to follow that path. Now how that pathfinding is going to work specifically, we are going to look at in a second. Let's do this step by step. So for now, let's work the pathfinding into this actual project, and then we can work on the actual movement of the character or well, the Roomba. So here we are back in the code. And the first thing I want to do is in our init method, I want to add another section for the path finding. And in here, I'm going to create another attribute that is just going to be path, and this is going to be an empty list. And now inside of this class, I'm going to define another method that I'm going to call create path. And this needs self and nothing else. And in here, we need to get three major things. We first need a start cell, then we are going to need an end cell, and then we need to get our path from all of this. 
And I guess let's go for them one by one. Now, first of all, I want to get a start X and a start Y cell. And in a bit, once we have our Roomba, we are going to give the Roomba a method to do all of this. But for now, I'm just going to go with one and one. So the top left of our movable cells. But later on, this one is going to become much more flexible. And once we have that, I want to get my actual start node. So this is going to be self dot grid dot node. And in here, I want to pass in my start X and my start Y. So this is the exact same thing we have done earlier to get the start position. And now for the end position, we want to find our mouse position again. And to achieve that, I can just copy these lines of code again and minimize this part. And now we have the cell we are currently selecting with our mouse. And I guess for consistency, let's call this end underscore y and end underscore x. And let's move them after each other. And this way it's going to be a little bit clearer to read. Although one part annoys me a little bit right now that I just want to move them around so that end x comes first and end y comes second. And all right, with that, we have an end x and an end y. So now that we have that, we can create a proper end node. So self.grid.node again, and this time again, end x and end y. And now we have a start and we have an end. So now with that, we can create the actual path. And this part, I would really recommend for you to try yourself. So open the previous project again and try to implement this kind of thing yourself. That you create a finder and from this finder you create a path that you are just going to print for now. All right, so first of all, we have to create a finder. And this finder is going to be an A star finder. And in here, I want to get my diagonal movement to be a diagonal movement dot always. So this way our Roomba can move in a diagonal direction. Now, once we have that information, I want to run finder dot find underscore path. And in here I have my start, I have my end, and I have my grid. And grid is self dot grid. And all of this is essentially what we have done in the first simplified project, except now we are actually using it in a real project. Now, this finder here is going to return the path and the runs. And in my case, I only really care about the path. And I want to set this path as self.path. And then for the runs, I'm just going to use an underscore to indicate that I don't really care what happens to this information. But essentially, whatever is going to be returned by this method here is going to be stored in this self.path. And now what we can do is print our self.path. Except now we kind of have a problem because we have a method, but we don't really know when to run it. And there's a massive thing you absolutely have to avoid because technically, you could run self.createPath in here. And if we were to do that, we would get a new path on every frame of our game. And right now, we have 60 frames in our game. The problem is, this kind of pathfinding is really hardware intensive. So if we actually tried this, our frame rate would drop down really, really hard. Basically, no computer can run pathfinding this often. So instead, let's not do that. And a much better idea is that every time we click a mouse button, we are going to run this method. And to do that, we are going to look at this for loop here. And really, all I want to do is if the event dot type is equal to pygame dot mouse button down, then I want to get my path finder and run my create path. So this way, we are only going to create a path whenever the player clicks a button. 
which is much more reasonable and much more efficient. And I guess with that, we are not going to use this for loop anymore, so I can minimize it. And now, in this code, let's try it. And if I click anywhere, we are getting a path. So we know the pathfinding is working just fine. The problem now, if I click again, we just get, well, an empty list. Essentially, once we are running all of this, our start node is going to be in the same position as our end node. So by default, pathfinding doesn't really care what we define in here. Once we have run this line, we always set the end and the start position. And this way, we can run this pathfinding once. However, if we try to run it a second time, it's going to return an empty list because our start node and our end node are in the same position. So that's not helpful. But fortunately, we can change that behavior. All we have to do is self.grid.cleanup. And that way, all of this is going to be reset at the end of the path. And once we have that, we're going to recalculate this position and this position here. So now let me print self.path again. And now let's run all of this. So now if I click right next to our start position, we go from 1, 1, 2, 1, and then 3, 2. So this is our path right now. But if I click all the way down here, we are getting a very, very long path. But, well, we always get a new path, no matter where we click. So this is working really well. However, I guess just printing the path looks kind of boring. So let's draw the entire thing. And for this, I'm going to create another method that I'm going to call draw path. It needs self and nothing else. And now in here, I first want to check if self.path has anything in there. So if self.path is empty, this if statement is not going to run. But if it is going to run, I want to create another list with points. And essentially what we have to do is call pygame.draw.lines. And in here, we have to pass in a couple of arguments. First of all, we need a display surface. Then we need a color. And in my case, the color I have chosen as the code of this. Although you could literally choose whatever color you want in here. It, well, doesn't really matter. Now, next up, we want to tell if all of the lines we are drawing are going to be closed or open. So this is a Boolean statement. In my case, I want this to be open. So we don't connect the first and the last point. Now, next up, we are going to need points. So all the points we are going to create in just a second. And then finally, we are going to need a line width, which in my case is five, but well, choose whatever number you want. It really doesn't matter. And all that this method here is going to do, it is going to draw a couple of lines between all the points we are going to pass in here. And these points have to be in here. And now we kind of have a problem again, because all the points in the path, so this path here, are going to be something like 0 and 0, or 1 and 1, or something like 20 and 10. But for these points, we want actual x and y positions. So we kind of have to do the opposite of what we did earlier, where we converted the mouse position into a grid. Now we have to convert a grid to actual positions. And this is going to be a for loop. So for point in self.path. So I want to go through all the points in this path. And inside of this, I want to create an X and a Y position. And first of all, I want to get point zero. So in our self.path, this would be the column. And to convert this from a grid back to an actual position, I just want to multiply this by 32. And then I could do the very same thing for Y, except now this has to be a one. And this is going to work for now, although we do want to make a change in just a second. But now, literally, all I want to do is to get my points variable and append x and y. And this has to be appended as a tuple. And now, once we have that, I can call this method, so self.drawPath, and let's see what happens. We can see that 
nothing is working. So let's check in our loop. Ah, and the mistake I made here is that draw active cell, it should be update instead. So we're calling all of this, not just the active cell. So now let's try this again. So now if I click, now we're getting a path. And if I click again, we are getting a different path. And all the way in the bottom right, now we keep on getting working paths. So this is kind of working, not all that bad. The problem we have now is that our path always goes to the top left of our cell, which looks a bit strange. So instead, I want to move the points of this path to the center of each of the tiles and not to the top left. And this is also quite easily done. So back in my draw path, all I really have to do is to put both of these into brackets and then add plus 16. So plus half the size of each of the tiles. And now if I run this again, this is going to look much better. So I hope you can see the difference. This is now our path always ends in the center of the tile, not in the top left. But everything else works just fine. And this way, we also don't overlap with the walls. So this is looking pretty good. So this is then already some pretty good working path binding that works very reliable. And there's one additional thing I have been drawing. And it is right now, whenever we have a corner, it looks a little bit ugly because the draw lines feature in Pygame just doesn't look very good. So I essentially just drew a circle on top of each of the corner to make it look a bit more rounded. And this happens with pygame.draw.circle and make sure it's inside of this for loop. And in here, we are going to need this screen again, so our display surface. Besides that, I want to have the same color. And then besides that, I need an X and a Y position. And fortunately, those two I already have, so they are very easy to get. And now finally, I need a radius, which in my case is two. And let me get rid of this comma here. And now let's run this. It's gonna be very difficult to see but maybe can tell very slightly that now the corners look a bit more rounded. I guess, let me exaggerate this a touch. So now, now you can see what's going to happen. And essentially if we turn the circle radius a bit down, okay, that might even be too large. Two, I think is just enough. So this way it looks a bit, let's say a tiny bit more rounded. It's very, very hard to see. So with that, we basically have our basic Pathfinder module. So this one is working really well. Now, obviously this still doesn't help us all that much because we need the actual Roomba. And let's start working on this one now. And for this, we have to talk about how the movement is going to work. And the core logic is essentially going to be this. We are going to have a Roomba and whenever we click, we're going to give this Roomba a path. And once this Roomba has a path, it is going to go for every single point inside of this path. And essentially what's going to happen is the Roomba looks at its current position and at the first point in the path. And then the Roomba is going to move towards that path. And once the Roomba is hitting that point, it is going to recalculate the direction. And this way it's going to move through all of the possible points and eventually ends at the final one. And once we are running out of points, it is going to stop moving. And by the way, this is the very same logic I have used for the overworld in a Mario game in an earlier tutorial. So check this one out if you want to apply this kind of logic in a different context. It's basically working in the same way. But I guess let's implement all of this straight in the code. That's usually going to be the best way. Here we are back in the code and I want to create another class. And let's call this one class Roomba. It's going to be pygame.sprite.sprite .sprite for the inheritance because we are going to create a sprite, quite obviously. And now in here, we are going to need an init method that for now needs self and let's say nothing else for now, although it will need something else later on. And in here, I want to create a basic setup first. And the first we need is super.dunder init as always 
And then we are going to need self.image and self.rect. And well, for the image, all we're going to do is import an image. So pygame.image.load, and we have a file called Roomba.png. I am terrible at spelling PNG. And this, as always, we need to convert alpha to use it a bit more efficiently. And now for the rectangle, I want self.image.get underscore rect. And for the center, I have put this thing at 60 and 60. So it's roughly in the top left of the screen, although the specific position really doesn't matter all that much. Now, next up, I'm going to add another section that I called movement in a comment. And in here, I'm going to set self.position. For now, it's going to be self.rect.center. Why this one is important, you're going to see in just a second. But besides that, I want to set self.speed at 0.6. And this is literally just going to be how fast the Roomba is going to move. Now, finally, I want one more section, and I call this one the path. And in here, we're also going to have self.path. And this again is just going to be an empty list. And in just a bit, we're going to pass the path that we created in our pathfinder inside this path here. And then finally, we need to get this thing a direction, which is going to be a pygame.math.vector2, which I can set to 0 and 0. So by default, this isn't going to do anything. And I guess the direction could be in the movement. I think it makes a bit more sense there. All right, so now we have our basic Roomba. And let's start by drawing this thing. So back in my Pathfinder, I'm going to add another section here, and let's call this one Roomba. And in here, self.character is going to be pygame.sprite.com group single and inside of this group single I am going to create this Roomba actually let's call it not character but Roomba that makes a bit more sense so we're going to create inside of this group single an instance of the Roomba class and for now it doesn't have any arguments so we can just leave it at that so now I can minimize this init method and in the update method I can Roomba updating and drawing. And really, all I want to do in here is self.roomba.update and self.roomba.draw on the screen. So this is going to be very simple updating with sprites. Again, if you have no idea how any of this works, check out my introduction to Pygame. It's going to help you enormously. But all right, now I can minimize this one as well. And if I run the code, might work. Yep, now we can see in the top left, we have our Roomba. So all the way up here. Doesn't really do anything right now, but that we are going to work on, well, now. And the first thing we have to work on is when we create our path. Right now, we always start in this position, but I want to get this position from the current center of our Roomba. So ideally, what I would like to do is self dot Roomba dot sprite. So this actual sprite inside of the sprite single class. And this one should have a method called get coordinate to give us the position of what cell it's currently on. And well, that is what we have to create now. So in here, define get underscore coordinate. It needs self and nothing else. And in here, again, we have to convert an actual position into a tile coordinate. And I think we haven't done an exercise in a while. So try to do this yourself. And this should be fairly similar compared to what we have done with the mouse. So try to figure this one out yourself. All right, so essentially, I want to get a column, I want to get a row, and once I have those two bits of information, I want to return the column and the row. So how can I get them? Well, first of all, I need the center of this Roomba. And this I can get with self.rect.centerx for the column 
and for the row, it is going to be center Y. So this is going to give me the actual position on the screen. And this, I have to floor divide by 32 again. And well, that's literally all we needed. So this is pretty much the same thing we have done for the mouse. So same logic here, essentially. So this now we can minimize and not worry about it again. And I guess now let's try all of this. So now when I run this, now we can see that our Roomba starts in this position. Very hard to see because it's, well, the same cell. So it doesn't really count, but um, you're going to see later on this is going to work better. But for now, we don't get an error message. That's usually a good sign. But next up, we have to create another method. And this I have called set path. It is going to need self and then the path we want to set. And really all that's going to happen here is self.path is going to be the path we pass in it. And now for this path, I want to call this once we have an actual path in our pathfinder. So in here, self.roomba.sprite dot uh, set path I think I called it yeah and in here self dot path so literally all that's going to happen is once we are running all of this and we have an actual path we want to run this path I am then going to pass inside of this Roomba so then we can work with this path inside of this sprite individually so as a matter of fact, we don't have to worry about this class at all anymore. It's all going to work inside of this Roomba. And that's going to make our life a fair bit easier. And now inside of set path, we have to do two more things. First of all, we have to self, and I call this one create underscore collision underscore rects. I'm going to explain in a second what this one does. And then after that, self.get underscore direction. So what are these two methods doing? Well, get direction, I think is, well, fairly obvious. It gets the direction. And let me actually draw this. Right now, we have our Roomba here. And let's say we have a point here, we have a point here, we have a point here. And what get direction does is it looks at the current position of our Roomba and then calculates the direction to the next point. And then the Roomba is going to move in that direction. And then we are going to check if this Roomba is going to collide with this point. And once that does happen, we are going to recalculate the direction. So this one here, and then our Roomba is going to move this way. And that way our Roomba is going to follow this path all the way to the end. The problem we have now though is how do we check the collision? And for this, in my case, I have created a rectangle at each of these points. And this is what create collision rects does. It essentially goes through every single point in our self path and places a rectangle at every single one of these points. And this we can then use to change the direction of our Roomba. And well, now we have to create these two methods. So let me actually create them. So define this one. For now, let me add pass in here. And neither of them need any argument. So that's going to make things a fair bit easier. And let's start by create collision rectangles. That one actually isn't all that difficult. And then here, first of all, we want to check if self.path even exists, because if it doesn't, there's no point running any of this. And I guess in here, what could happen is if the player clicks on the Roomba and we are running all of the pathfinding in here, but since we click on the Roomba itself, the path is going to be empty because the start and the end cell are the same position. So this way we do want to check if even if the player clicks on something in the field, we are checking for errors. And now inside of here, I want to create self.collision underscore rects. And for now, this is just going to be an empty list. As a matter of fact, I want to create this list right when we are initiating this Roomba class. 
And this again is just to make sure that we always have this attribute available, even if we don't call this method, just in case it's not strictly necessary. Now we are going to do kind of the same logic we have done earlier in our pathfinder for drawing the path. So very similar to what we have done here. Because in here, we looked at all the points inside of the path, converted each point to a position in our field, and then in here, just draw a point through them. But what we want to do for our Roomba or the collision rectangles in here is we don't want to draw a point, instead we want to create a rectangle. But, well, the basic logic is the same. So for point in self.path, I again want to create an X and a Y coordinate. And well, here the same logic applies. So I want point for X is going to be zero multiplied by 32. And on top of that, we're going to add 16. So half the size to make sure that we are in the center of this tile. And now I can copy all of this, change this to a one, and then we have the X and the Y position. So this is actually not that hard. Now, next up, we want to use that information to create a rectangle. And this is just going to be pygame.rect. And in here, again, we are going to need a tuple with the left and the top, and then another tuple with the width and the height. Now, the width and the height are going to be quite simple. In my case, the rectangle is just going to be a dimension of four and four. So it's four pixels wide and four pixels high. And since our speed is 0 0.6, this should very easily be enough. And now for the left, I essentially want to get the X and the Y. Although right now this would not work. And let me explain why. Essentially, if this is one of the tiles in our game, so this is 32 by 32 pixels, and our X and Y right now would be exactly in the middle of that. But if we just place these points in here, we always place the top left. So our rectangle would look something like this, which, well, would be kind of a problem because there is a chance that the Roomba might move something like this and miss the rectangle entirely. So we have to give this thing an offset to actually place the center of it. And that is, well, very simple. All we have to do is to subtract half of the width and half of the height of it. And that way we move this rectangle exactly in the center of each of these points. And well, once we have that, all we have to do is get self.collisionRect and append the rectangle. And with that, we are creating a bunch of rectangles along the path. And now we can minimize this and we should never need to open it again. Unless I made a mistake, always a chance for that. Now, next up, we have to work on our get direction. And in here, we need if self dot collision rects. So if there's any point inside of our collision rectangles, because if there's no point left, we know we have reached the end of the path. And if that's the case, we shouldn't be moving anymore. But once there are collision rectangles, I want to get a start position, an end position, and then I want to set the self dot direction end minus the start, and I want to normalize all of that. So this is going to be very simple vector math because the start and the end are both going to be a vector. And if you subtract the end from the start of a vector, you get the direction between the two vectors. Um, if you don't know vector math, this might seem weird, but I guess check out vector math, it's super useful. But essentially now what we have to get is the vector for our start and the vector for our end. And the start is the really simple one. All we need here is pygame.math.vector2. And in here, I want to set my self.position. So this is the position we created further up here. And then for the end, I also want to get pygame.math.vector2. And for the end, I want to get the first collision rectangle. So self dot collision rects and zero. And this is going to be a rectangle, not a position. 
So from this, we have to get the center. And that is kind of all we needed. Now, I also want to add an else statement that if we are running out of collision rectangles, I want to set self.direction back to pygame.math.vector2. And this should just be zero and zero. So essentially, we are not moving at all. And then self.path should also be an empty list. So that once we got through all of the collisions, we get rid of the path again. So we are definitely not going to move anymore. And all right, with that, we can finally create an update method for this Roomba. And in here, all I want to do is self.position is going to be plus equal self.direction multiplied by self.speed. So essentially, what we're going to do right now is we have this point here. And this point starts at the center of our Roomba. And this point, we are going to move in this direction at this speed here. And the direction we are going to get from the position of the first point in our path. And then self.rect.center is going to be self.position. So this way we make sure we actually place the Roomba at the position that we have set here. Now, why is this important? Why couldn't we just go straight with self.rect.center here? Why do we need position at all? And the reason is that vectors and Pygame are not exactly perfectly compatible. So when we place a rectangle, so a rectangle like here, we always place integers, whereas vectors like self.direction is always going to be a float. And Pygame converts a float to an integer automatically. So that's not the problem. The problem is when these two numbers are converted, we are losing some information. So if you always edit the direction here, you might get a slight offset that's not intended because a float here might be 0 0.78, completely random number. But when Pygame places this rectangle, this 0 0.78 is just going to be zero. And if you keep on adding these tiny offsets, eventually this center is going to be in a completely different position because every movement is going to add a tiny additional offset. And this, well, obviously isn't going to be great. And the way around that is to store all of this information inside of this position. And this position is always going to be a floating point number. And then when we place this rectangle, we always place this in the same position. So that way we avoid adding the error. And again, check out my overworld tutorial. It's going to explain all of this in much more detail. But all right, I guess let's actually run all of this finally to see what's going to happen. So the game still runs. Now if I click on something, we are moving in completely the wrong direction. Good to know. Although it's not entirely wrong. And I guess, let me explain why. So right now, the origin point of our Roomba is here. And the first point that we are going to create for our path is going to be here. And then the second point is going to be here. The third point is here, then here, and so on. Essentially, our path is going to be this, this, and then I assume something like this. And the reason why our Roomba is going to the top left is because this initial first bit here. Let me overemphasize it a tiny bit. So the direction is actually working. The problem is now that once we are colliding with any of these collision rectangles, we don't actually change the direction. So this is something we have to add, but everything else seems to work. So let's add a collision mechanic. And this is just going to be another method. And let's call this one check collisions. It needs self and nothing else. And in here, first of all, as always, I want to check if self.collisionRects even exists. Because if it doesn't, there's no point running any of the stuff inside of it. And now inside of this, I want to check for rect in self.collision rectangles. So I want to look at all of the rectangles inside of this list. And what I want to do, 
is if rect dot collide point self dot position. So essentially, I am looking at this self dot position. So the position we are moving down here. And if this point is in any of the rectangles, I want to run some code. And what I want to run is self dot get underscore direction again. Except now, I don't want to get the point I'm currently on. Uh, let me actually explain this. So let's say right now, this is our Roomba. And right now we have a point here and a point here. And our Roomba has moved to this point and now happens to be right on top of it. And now we are running get direction. So this one here. The problem we have now is that get direction always picks the first point from this path, which in our case would still be this point here. So the point our Roomba is already on top of. So if we were to run the code like this, we would get a weird result. Essentially the Roomba wouldn't work at all. But this is a problem we can work around quite easily. Literally, all we have to do, once we are colliding with this point, we want to delete that point. So delete self dot collision rects and the first item. So once we are colliding with the point, we are going to delete that point and then get a new direction. And that way our Roomba is always going to move towards the next point once it reaches the current point. And now all we have to do is to actually call this method. And I have called this right after the first line. So self dot check collisions. And now let's run this again. So now we are actually moving this Roomba and this is looking really good. But now at the end, oh, it's actually working. Okay. So problem now is that this is kind of slow. So let's increase the speed a tiny bit. So the speed right now, 0 0.6, let's put this to a two. And now this is looking significantly nicer. And I'm just realizing drawing the points here looks kind of bad when I run it often enough. But well, by itself, this is actually working really well. And you can even click it whenever you want. And this is going quite well. And well, it's working super well already. And okay, so with that, we are nearly done. There's one more thing I would like to add. And let me minimize all of these methods because they're kind of hard to read right now. Okay, so here we have our two classes. They have gotten quite a bit complex over time. But the one thing I would like to add now is that once the Roomba is reaching the end point, I want to empty this self.path. It's not strictly necessary, but from the game logic point of view, once the Roomba is reaching the end of this path, the path isn't necessary anymore. And if you have a more complex project, it might interfere with something else. And well, all we need for that is another method that I'm going to call empty underscore path. It needs self and nothing else. And literally all we are doing in here is self dot path is going to be an empty list. And then when we create this Roomba, I'm going to pass this empty path into it. And now inside of the Roomba class, we can create an instance of empty path. And now in here, let's put it down here next to path. So self dot empty path is going to be empty path. And now all I want to check is in my collisions that I already check if collision rects exist at all. But once we reach the end of this, Collision regs should be empty. And if it's empty, an else statement 
should be running. And what I can do in here is run self dot empty the path. And this should then empty the path so that in our pathfinder, we don't have anything in here anymore, which feels a bit cleaner. And now let's run all of this again. We are getting an error. All right, it should be self dot empty path. So now let's try this again. And there we go. So now you don't really see a difference, except now the path disappears because we are deleting it, which I think is a bit better. And all right, this is feeling quite nice. I guess it's still a bit slow and I hate the points. Let me get rid of those. So draw path. Um, let's get rid of this drawing here. Looks a bit ugly now that I look at it. And then for the speed, let's set this to a three. This should definitely be fast enough. And now let's run off this again. And now with our Roomba. So this is working really well. And well, now you have all you need to create pathfinding in basically any kind of game. So this sort of system you can pretty much create wherever you want. It's pretty flexible when it comes down to it. So well, with that, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you around.